Hi everybody, this is Gary Fong, and I'm here to address one of the most hotly debated topics on the internet today, is when you're shooting JPEG on your camera, should you choose Adobe RGB and sRGB? And you can look at a whole lot of different forums, and you'll just probably get more confused because the opinions vary so much. So here's the basic uh, rule about sRGB versus Adobe RGB, and I'm going to show you some examples in real life to show you how this works. If you're going to be shooting and you're simply going to be uploading to the web or you're going to be printing on a wet process printer, like something like at a photo lab like H&H uh, or um, White House or you know some of the pro photo labs, then you'll want to choose sRGB. If you're shooting in you're going to be outputting to, say, a uh, managed profile, like you've got a Adobe RGB printer that has a wider gamut, or you have a monitor that has the ability to see the wider range of colors or the wider gamut of colors in Adobe RGB, then shoot in Adobe RGB because you'll enjoy better color quality. And I'm going to show you in real world uh, examples here both on the internet and print. And what you see that I have here right now is I've got three windows open. And on the left here is Safari. In the middle is Chrome. And on the right is Firefox. Now, right over here on the right, you'll see I've got two images. One is underscore MG, and the other one starts with IMG. So that you'll know, anything that starts with the underscore MG on a Canon 5D will be in the Adobe RGB color space. And the point I'm going to show you is this. We're going to take both of these images, one in Ado Adobe RGB, one in sRGB, and we're going to put them on each of the viewers to show what looks better or not. Now, the general rule, of course, would be this. If you're shooting, hold on just a quick second. This is supposed to close. Close, 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 close. So the rule of thumb is this, of course. Test whatever you, you want to do, but if you take an Adobe RGB file, so for example, you're on your camera and you choose Adobe RGB and you upload it to a number of web browsers or any of the mobile devices, the colors will actually look worse than if you shot it in, Ado uh, in sRGB. And I'm going to show you. Now, the, the sole example that I've been able to find on the internet would be Safari. Safari actually looks better if it's Adobe RGB because it's called what they call a managed uh, web browser, color managed web browser. So let me just go through the different examples and I'll show you what I mean. So first, let's start with Firefox and I'll just take Firefox over here and open it wide. And this is the new newest version of Firefox because I just uh, just downloaded it. So let's take this one called underscore MG, which is the Adobe uh, setting, Adobe RGB setting. OK, so you can see that right there. And we'll start a new window. And we're going to take the IMG, which is the sRGB. Now I'm going to take these two guys, and I'm going to separate out the windows so you can see them side by side. So this one on the right, let's just position it so you can see it better. This one on the right, as you can see, it's IMG, so that is the sRGB captured file. And this one right here on the left is the underscore MG, or this is the Adobe RGB captured file. So you can see basically the difference in color on the left, and this is universally a complaint that a lot of photographers have, is the minute that they switch their cameras between, say, sRGB to Adobe RGB, especially because they hear on the internet, everybody says that Adobe is the better preferred color space, they wind up with uh, colors that look worse, and that's simply because the web browser uh, right here, in this case, Firefox, and a lot of the monitors and a lot of, of course, the wet process printers can't handle the wider gamut of Adobe RGB. So what happens is it loses color. It, it's, this is basically a phenomenon called color clipping, and you'll see this a lot if you search this on the internet. So in short, on the left is Adobe RGB, on the right is sRGB. Now let's go over to Safari. Safari is different. Safari actually has what they call a managed uh, color managed browser. So we'll take this one right here and we'll take the Adobe RGB and we'll drop it into the browser. Okay. Now I'm going to take a new window and uh, oops, let's go over to Safari. We'll take a new window here. 
under Safari, I'll put it right next to this guy. And then I'll take the sRGB file and we'll put it side by side, okay? So here we have on the left the Adobe RGB and on the right the sRGB, as you can tell by the, the screen names, of, uh, the file names, of course, IMG meaning sRGB and underscore MG meaning Adobe RGB. So this gives you an example of the better color saturation that you'll get if you're using a uh, color workflow that is able to capture the entire range of uh, colors in the gamut of those spaces that you're using. So if you choose Adobe RGB, like I've said before, it's a very, very wide gamut and it has a, a larger volume of colors. And when you try to put that into sRGB equipment, the sRGB equipment is smaller. So what happens is there's color clipping, colors that will not make it into the smaller equipment. This is also what I've said before is that it's kind of like a muffin top. You can try to cram all of this stuff into a muffin, but you're going to have some hangover, and some of it's not going to make it down into the tin, and that's basically what's happening here. In this situation in Safari, because it is a color-managed web browser, you can see that there is a perceptible uh, more red in the hair and uh, in the lips right here. Uh, you can see just a uh, you know, a little bit more color saturation. But let's compare this to Chrome. We'll go to Chrome and, oh, I've already closed that, so let's edit this out. Go back to Chrome and we'll take, let's hide everything else. And so on Chrome, we'll put the Adobe RGB here and then we'll put the sRGB here. Oops, let's see what's going on here. So the sRGB is here. So this is what happens in Chrome, Adobe RGB on the left, sRGB on the right. And it looks pretty bad. I mean, it really looks dull and colorless. So the thing is, is if you're going to be showing your work on the Internet and you upload an Adobe RGB file, which is basically most of uh, the Internet, then you would wind up with colors like you see on the left. If you shot it in sRGB mode, then you would see it like the colors on the right. Uh, Safari here, you can see on the left, because it's a color managed browser, you can see a little bit more rich colors than you would see with the sRGB, but it's not as uh, drastic of a difference as in Chrome. So now let's do the same thing with Firefox. And I'll go over to Firefox and, uh, let's see, did I do? Yeah, this is Firefox. And so what you're seeing here, I'll just do it again so you guys can actually see it being pulled in. So we'll go and take out those. So we'll go in Firefox. We'll start a new window and another new window right there. And so we'll take the first one right here, which is the Adobe RGB image. I'll drop that into Firefox and we'll put that right there so we can see it. And then the next one will be the sRGB and we'll drop it into Firefox. And so you can see right here the difference. So the one on the right, again, is, uh, uh, let's see, IMG. So the one on the right is sRGB, and that's the way it's going to look. On the left is Adobe RGB, and that's the way that's going to look. So this is Firefox, and this is Chrome. On the left is Adobe RGB. On the right is sRGB. And then this one is in Safari. Safari on the left is Adobe RGB, and on the right is sRGB. So <laughs> if you're going to be displaying your work on the internet, this is actually kind of a, a very interesting thing, but it would be to your advantage if you knew that the um, browser that your viewer was going to be using is not going to be an iPad or an iPhone, uh, or I think some of the new mobile devices actually have a wider gamut. But uh, if it's, you know, typical web browser like Chrome, we tested it on a Safari for Windows and got the same result where the Adobe RGB was actually duller. So in our test, the only thing that we could find where the Safari looked uh, better uh, I'm sorry, where the color looked better in Adobe RGB, or at least, you know, better subjective, so I'm just going to say more color saturated, was only in Safari for the Mac. So it kind of like begs the question, when you upload your images, should you have a separate website uh, called, you know, maybe the Mac Safari version to see your work in its be best light? And that's the part that makes the whole thing just kind of a, a little bit interesting. The safer way to go would be to shoot 
it in sRGB mode. And then as you can see right here on the right, the sRGB in Safari uh, doesn't look too bad. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to minimize this window so you can see right here that says I'm going to take the sRGB in Chrome and I'll put it side by side against the sRGB in Safari. And you'll look at the two, and they're very, very close, okay? So same thing here. We're going to get rid of Chrome. We're going to bring up Firefox. And in Firefox, this is, we're going to take, see right here, this is the sRGB. I'm going to move it to the left and compare it side by side to the uh, Safari sRGB. And you can see the two are much closer together. So the one that's really just the ugly uh, duckling of them all would be SRG uh, Adobe RGB in expressed in any of the sRGB formats, like right here, would be the, um, of course, the uh, Adobe RGB in the sRGB Chrome web browser space. So in another upcoming video, we're going to be doing a series of print tests, and I'm going to be showing you the difference in color in the print test so you can decide for yourself which uh, setting is better for you. Uh, for me to give you a, a quick shortcut, most of the time, it's uh, if especially if you know you're going to be putting up to the web or on a wet process printer. So I would say most of the use of images today go up on the web. And then if you're going to have any prints made, then it would be probably wet process. Now this whole argument, if you shot it in RAW, that's fine because then you can, of course, export to whatever space you want. You can export it to a uh, matching printer profile. But you know, all of these other things get very, very complicated very fast, and it just adds to more confusion. So here's what would happen. If I'm a photographer and I just switch the camera to Adobe RGB, I'm immediately going to see on most web browsers duller colors. If I take it to a wet process, like a regular print lab that does, you can ask some wet process, it's called RA4, prints, the colors will be duller. If you take an, a, uh, an sRGB file and you upload it to the internet, uh, you'll see that the colors retain this very pretty color saturation you see here. And if you print out on the regular wet process printers, uh, again, what's called RA4 chemistry, which is in most of the pro labs, uh, then you'll get a, a prettier color in sRGB than you would in Adobe RGB. But <laughs> if you shot in an Ado Adobe RGB and you're going to go straight to a color managed, say, inkjet print or something like that, or even CMYK separations for prepress, you would see better color in the Adobe RGB. But what you can see here is the difference in the color. And I'll say, let's go to Safari. And we'll go back to, where did it go? Window. Okay, so we're going to show the... This is the Adobe RGB on the left, and then this is Safari, Adobe RGB on the right. So the, the difference, the best you can do here on these uh, color managed systems, and this is a Thunderbolt monitor, which uh, you know obviously you can't see what my monitor is seeing, but you can get an idea through the system what has the richer saturation. You can see right here on the left, this is the best difference that you would have between Adobe RGB and sRGB. So anyway, take those decisions and decide for yourself, first of all, where are you going to be expressing your image? And then decide from that point on what we're going to do with capture. Of course, it's simpler if you shoot in in RAW, but once you shoot in RAW, you need to know exactly how to export it as well. So those questions do come up, but you'll see in short on my channel, on Will uh, Crockett's video, He'll tell you the same thing that I do. If you're going to shoot and it's going to go up on most web browsers or wet print processing, then choose sRGB. If you're going to be shooting and you know you're going to be in a color managed environment that would have, say, inkjet presses that have the wider gamut of Adobe RGB, then shoot in Adobe RGB. But make very, very sure that if you have that Adobe RGB and you're going to upload it to the internet to then convert the color profile to 
sRGB before you upload or else you're going to suffer the dull colors that I showed you right here. Okay, so I hope that helps uh, clear up the confusion. Uh, coming soon will be the print comparison showing what happens when we take an Adobe RGB file, send it through sRGB equipment and uh, or stay within its own color space. Okay, thanks for watching and don't forget to dis uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel right up here. And uh, also check out our premium channel at GaryFong.com for the finest in photography learning. Thank you.